Dr. Dakar, you said there isn't any mistake in Quran. I see more than 20 mistakes in Arabic grammar. Surtaha 63. Mistake. Can you explain that? The brother has asked a very good question. I would like to be more concordant and agreeing. He has mentioned all 20 grammatical points. And the book is referring to by Abdul Fadi. Abdul Fadi, correct? Is the Quran infallible? I can yeah. see some things. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, my side is good. <laughs> I will answer all 20 together. Because I've read the book. I'll answer all 20, inshallah. Inshallah. Point number one, brother. Point number one. Point number one to be noted that all Arabic grammar is taken from the Quran. Quran was the highest Arabic book, a book which has the maximum level of highest literature. All the Arabic grammar has been derived from the Quran. Quran is the textbook of grammar. Since Quran is the textbook of grammar and all the grammar is derived from the Quran, the Quran can never have a mistake. Point number one. <laughs> point number two. Point number two. Point number two. It is like you know taking a ruler and the ruler is there, has a measurement, and you're saying the measurement is wrong. It sounds illogical. Point number two. In the different tribes of Arabia, and you know Arabic, and Dr. William Campbell also will agree with me. In different Arabic tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. In some Arabic tribe, the word is feminine. The same word is even masculine in the other tribes of Arabia. In different tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. Even the gender keeps on changing. So will you check Quran with that faulty grammar? No. And furthermore, the eloquence of Quran is so high. It's so high, it is far superior. And you know, there are various books on the internet, you go, 12 grammatical mistake, 21 grammatical mistake, Abdul Fadi, 20 grammatical mistake. Do you think the Christian people took out these mistakes? Who took out these mistakes? Do you know who took out? The Muslims, the Muslim scholars, like Zamakshari, what they did, that the Quran grammar is so high that it goes against the conventional use of the Arabic. The Quran grammar is so high, to prove the Quranic grammar was high, they gave examples. And I'll give you a couple of examples, which will answer all his 20 questions. They give the example, like we read in the Quran, it says that the people of Lut, alayhi salam, they rejected all the messengers. They rejected the messengers it's mentioned. Dr. William Campbell said, the people of Noah, they rejected the messengers. We know from history that there was only one messenger sent to them. So it has a grammatical mistake. Quran should have said, the people rejected the messenger, not messengers. I agree with you. With layman grammar, like how you and I know, it may be a mistake. But if you read the books written by Arabs, what is the beauty of the Quran? The beauty of the Quran is, why does the Quran refer messengers instead of messenger? You know why? Because we know that the basic message of all the messengers was same. That there is one God about Tawheed, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By mentioning the people of Ruth alayhi salam, the people of Noah rejected the messenger. It says by rejecting Ruth alayhi salam, they are indirectly rejecting all the messengers. <laughs> see the beauty, see the eloquence, alhamdulillah. You may think it's a mistake. It's not a mistake. Similarly, people like Anush Suraj says that Quran says, Kun fayakun, be and it is. It should be kun fakana, be and it was. Agreed, past tense is kun fakana in Arabic. It's not kun fayakun, but the kun fayakun is more superior. It says Allah, it was, it is, and can do. Past, present, and future. Thank you, Dr. Naik.